torque sensing, cadence sensing. You've probably heard about both of these technologies if you've been looking at e-bikes. I've seen some videos talking about them, but I don't think it's really getting to the nitty gritty of how they really work, which we're gonna dive in and show them in detail how they work, who they work for best, and why you might want one or the other. So stay tuned, we're gonna show you how this works, get a feel for it, know why it works, and try to really help you make a choice between these two sensors that are very different and not for all the reasons you might expect. Surface 604 Shred over here, which is a torque sensing hub motorbike. The KBO Breeze, which is a cadence sensing hub motorbike. So you have to have at least three to four pieces for each of these sensors to do what they are supposed to do. You have to have two sensors. One, either the torque or the cadence sensor. In this case, a cadence sensor to pick up the rotation of the pedals. You also have to have a speed sensor on a mid-drive. That's a separate speed sensor on hub motors that's generally in the wheel itself that will sense the speed. Um, you also have to have the controller and the display working together to interpret those signals to tell the motor back here how to work. Now I'm going to show you something I find really fascinating about this that I think will help you understand some of these things I'm, I'm talking about. I have this on the highest assist level right now. And so what you'll see is a basic cadence sensor. It starts to put out power at the minimum amount of pedal movement. So you see, as long as I maintain that minimum cadence, it is going to put out power. This is a very basic system. So it's only putting out power to a certain limit in each speed mode. It's not tied to speed in terms of how it applies the power coming from a stop. So this is just an exercise to show you. I'm doing this with some care. Hopefully this doesn't totally screw everything up. Um, that the chain is not actually your connect connection from your pedal power to the motor. It's a sensor. So here, same exact thing happens, right? I am not connected physically to that motor. So therefore, there's a couple things you can, if you snapped a chain, you could see there, you could still ride home. Uh, you just wouldn't have the resistance of the chain. It wouldn't feel even at, you know, a e-bike like cadence sensing bike, this feels a little weird, um, but it would feel really weird if you had no resistance from the pedals at all. Rear hub motor, Bafang, torque sensing, rear motorbike. The torque sensor is actually sitting right behind here. It's really hard to show. Um, you can kind of tell by these extra wires running down here. There's a disconnect for both the motor and, and the torque sensor. So it's sensing strain. Uh, so the torque sensor, instead of sensing cadence, is actually sen sensing the amount of strain put on the chain or the basically what's coming through the chain. And that's done either usually in the bottom bracket or back there on the back dropout. So these are usually engineered in a way that there's a kind of a minimum input of force. That way you're, uh, you're, you have almost a little bit of just cadence-based assist. Um, you can see on this bike, that's not very much. I'm pushing with my hand and I'm not really getting that. You can tell the bike is on. It's in assist level five. Um, I'm turning with a bit, little, and so nothing's happening because I'm not applying enough torque to the system. So because it's suspended up in the air a little bit, I'm in a little bit of a disadvantage for applying torque. I'm gonna to try to push real hard, real fast here and see if we get the motor to pull up, kick up in a little bit. You can hear it came on for a burst there. That's just when I met that minimum torque requirement. So at the, at the amount of torque, you get different applications of power. It is much more natural feeling, but you still are in that situation where you are disconnected from the motor, from the pedals. If I can't ca actuate that sensor, nothing happens here. So it's really, the magic on this bike is happening via the chain in this strain sensor and telling that motor what you're asking it to do. And then you fine tune that with the display telling you what amount of power equals those things you're trying to tell it through the pedals. So which of these kind of sensors are better for you? Typically, if you like to ride and have a real bike experience and you're gonna be pedaling all the time, torque sensor is the way to go with caveat it doesn't work for everybody uh, me actually I always pedal but I sort of like a cadence sensor if I'm commuting uh, if I'm riding some trails or something where I want more control over the bike uh, mostly from a 
a more of a feel perspective or my using my legs then the torque sensor is the way to go because I, I tend to ride this particular bike this torque sensing bike in the highest assist level and I can control the speed with my my pedal effort um, now that means unless I'm going to ride throttle only which I really don't recommend with a torque sensor there's no reason um, why buy a torque sensor if you're going to ride throttle only it doesn't make sense you, you, you're going to you're going to have more of a workout here so if you like that, then torque sensor is the way to go. It feels that, and you can override your throttle if you just want to take a little break occasionally.